Hello YouTube modeling community. Uh, this is Russ Rotor. Uh, this is an update on my uh, NYS uh, Pro Street group build. Uh, I had been waiting for the new release of the Lincoln Pro Street car to come out so I didn't have to cut into the, uh, the original kit I had. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's going to come in anytime soon. So we went ahead and started. Uh, we're going to just use it. I'll put the other one up when it get, comes in, and uh, we'll have it. Uh, but as you guys know, I'll set this down. We were uh, using the new uh, Boss Mustang 351, 1971. Uh, it's kind of a vision I've had for a long time. Uh, And then we're using the Lincoln as a uh, donor kit, I guess. I guess you could call it that. Uh, I had to do quite a bit of modifying, uh, to be honest. Uh, I didn't think I was going to have to as much. And then, uh, then the stuff that I thought I wouldn't have to fool with that much, I had to. So it's kind of been just a back and forth seesaw. Uh, show you here kind of kind of see I got it married together right now just mocking up uh, I had to scratch build this rear plate I still got to scribe on it some more clean it up uh, sand it down uh, but the uh, original one is right here I'm trying to keep the same design it's just not wide enough front to back uh, to cover up the big ass window on this Mustang. Uh, that being said, uh, if you look down in there, you can see I did allow enough room for the window to fit in, so I shouldn't have any issues there. Uh, the front glass fits in uh, just fine. Uh, everything's kind of cattywampus right now. Uh, I have fit the glass in there just to make sure uh, and then our front suspension comes out right there and then our rear suspension uh, put it all together and then I had to pad these brackets out that are on the uh, four link just to scoot the diff back a hair and as you can see they're right there in the center uh, we did get our tires and wheels cleaned up uh, about, they're ready for primer uh, and before I do that I got to cut the back of the wheel front and rear to uh, accommodate using the wheel backs as you can see here they do marry together fine but the back of the wheel or the rear tire I have to waller it out just a hair to fit this in there because it's a little too small but the thickness of this I will remove so, you know, about a heavy eighth of an inch off the back of each rear wheel. And then the front wheel is just the thickness is about a sixteenth and a half uh, off the front wheel. So it sits in there. And I only did that because, uh, I'll explain myself here. The wheel backs uh, set your tire where it needs to be, right? On any kit well I found out that these these tires go right on those wheel backs in the front perfect so you can kind of see uh, now when this is all together it's actually gonna look more like about like that uh, it's got a really good stance uh, everything's fitting so far uh, tell you what I did I had to go from uh, take an eighth and off an almost an eighth on each side off down to practically nothing uh, I had to notch the floor pan out for the uh, exhaust dump tubes uh, the exhaust dump tubes because I'm going to be using most of the exhaust kit uh, or the kits exhaust they come out just like that now the Lincoln had like faux exhaust tips right out here on the side of the quarters but 
uh, that just wasn't acceptable. So uh, the overachiever that I am, somebody shoot me, please. Uh, I drilled them out. Uh, and since I was so close to the bottom, it busted the bottom out. So I had to, I had to cut little pieces of styrene and fill it in, which that turned out really good. As you can see, you can't even hardly tell. Uh, I mean, that was using thin set, let it dry, sand, thin set, dry, sand, rinse, lather, and repeat uh, for both sides. But they came out equal, uh, so it's really good. I will take two tiny little pieces of uh, aluminum tubing, and I will bullhorn them uh, to fit on the end of the actual exhaust and come out through these right here. Uh, just so it, you know, see it. Uh, we are using here they are, round flanges. Get it off my finger there. That go over the exhaust ports here. Uh, and I rescribed a line on the door to look like the doors, you know, the body's been modified and it's been the back of the corner of the door's been clipped off and rounded off. So once I put my panel line wash in there, it'll, it'll show that there. And then this goes on right over that. Well, this isn't the round one, but it'll give you an idea. So you said the door would open and not hit the uh, flange. Uh, the actual flange I'm using, oh, here it is. Little round one, and when it's on there, see, looks good. There's detail on there, and I'll, I'll highlight all that out. Uh, on this body, we rescribed every window, the rain gutter, uh, the nose pieces, the tail pieces, the trunk, the marker lights, the door panels, uh, everything, because they were very faint. They weren't really deep enough. And with doing a mod like this and trying to make it look as real as possible, uh, I wanted them a lot deeper because my knife blade would make a deeper, uh, keep that up there so if you guys can see it. There you go. See, I just rescribed it. Did it on both sides. So now that's done. Uh, the body is ready for primer, and I'm probably have to come back and fill it. I slipped with the knife, like always. I'll have to touch up a few spots. Not a whole lot, though. It actually went really well, surprisingly. Uh, I couldn't have been more happy with the front suspension lining up perfect and only having to pat out the back that much to, you know, put that in there for you so you guys can see. You know, these 3D, 3D printed tires are, they're hair shorter and hair wider. So overall, basically the same size tire as far as mass, only it fills up the wheel well a lot better. And you know, on these kits, you get these tires. They're not, I mean, they're close, but they're not, no. You can see there's a lot of wiggle room in there for that tire. Uh, you may say it looks the same, but... Uh, don't argue with me. I'll prove you wrong. Uh, outside to outside. You can see. Like I said, almost an eighth of an inch wider uh, height. The rubber tire is about an eighth of an inch higher. So, these work great. I mean, and now my wheels are going to be exactly where they need to be. I don't have no guessing. I don't have to modify. I don't have to get into all that mess. Uh, the only dilemma is right now, uh, the, the engine will stay underneath the hood as of right now. Like I said we did have to scratch build a new pan and we'll, we'll get that all cleaned up and straightened up and scribed. Uh, I got a better tip to put in there and kind of just straighten everything up and smooth it out. And we'll get in there and sand it a little bit, make it as pretty as possible. Uh, we... Let me get it off here, I guess. Best best way to show you. I gotta repair my roll cage. We're using the Lincoln's floor pan. And that's because of the trans tunnel. 
uh, mainly. I didn't want to have to refabricate a new one. Uh, I like the fact of the roll cage. Uh, I do have to repair that roll cage right there. I popped it apart. But it's, for some reason, it's not. Oh, I think I found out the culprit. Okay. That's nothing. So, to give you an idea, I had to take about a quarter inch off the height of the roll cage. So, each vertical got cut a quarter inch. The cross bracing down here got cut. And then I cut this back so it would go to the face of the uh, floor pan here, right where my finger is. Uh, and then it's set level. I put a level on it, it's level, so it's good. The only thing I need to do now is adjust these, this X brace back here, take a little material off so it'll allow that to sit down in there like it's supposed to, flat. So, all that said, uh, we got our engine mocked, well, somewhat mocked up. We got to have this together. Uh, we got to do some sanding, get rid of the seam line. And then, uh, like always, I always paint, hand paint my engines. It's just something I personally enjoy to do. It's not the cleanest look, you know, no, it's not, but it's enjoyable. It's fun. That's what it's all about. Uh, you know, Dylan's one of his rules, have fun. So I'm having fun. I'm building this my way. It doesn't mean this will be a showpiece or anything, but you know, if it turns out really good at the end, then we'll, uh, We'll take it to a show, see what happens. Uh, but we got a lot of cleaning up to do either way on the interior tub from where I've cut, glued. It's just chipping it off, sanding it a little bit, and it'll be just fine. I gotta take a little material off of these. Uh, basically, I gotta cut them at this angle so they're the same height as these verticals. And then that'll let that sit in there. Uh, then we have to make a decision. Uh, now, the Lincoln's dashboard is notched out for the roll cage. You know, so if I put that in there, you can kind of see it's notched out for it. It fits in there really nice. Uh, it is going to change because I, I lowered the roll cage so it changes the bottom so now it's tilted in so I'd have to kind of round off the bottom uh, get it out here and I'll show you it's easier to show you round off the bottom of this about an eighth of an inch uh, and I would lose a little of this detail but I've got aftermarket stuff I can put in there and kind of make up for it so it's not a big deal and this is a two-piece dash anyways uh, I don't know where the other half is right now. It's right here somewhere. Uh, the chute is going on. I broke it off. I, I knew I would. I had no business gluing it on yet. But it's it's repairable. It'll go on here, right where the license plate is. And for the chute to go on, uh, we will detail up that chute, make it look more realistic. Uh, the dilemma. I can use, which will be more work, and I know that's totally up to me, I'm not asking you which way to go, but uh, I put the uh, Mustang door cards in there, and I cut this one already, and it does fit kind of where it's supposed to be. Uh, see that because this one is the shape of the, the Mustang's body so it saves me maybe I got to do a little modifying on the dash but it saves me uh, trying to manipulate the Lincoln store card into the shape of the Mustang when it's the shape of the Lincoln's uh, so you know two wrongs don't make a right I've already cut on the dash a little bit uh, so it's kind of like, you know, it's, you guys can see, if I just put this up there like this, you can see I'm going to have to notch the dashboard, which I don't think, I mean, I, I don't have to do much. 
I, I think I can get away with it. And if nothing else, then I have to go with the Lincoln and, you know, it's, it's all good. And I'll shape those to match. You know, you look at the shape of this, how it swoops. This one's kind of flat across the board. Uh, everything being kind of lower. This, this still comes into play, but will become too high when it's in the Mustang. So I'd have to kind of eat into this right here, uh, which I don't think would be bad. Hold on a second, guys. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, phone call, important. Uh, so where was I? Oh, so I don't think it'd be too much to cut in this and then we can re-sand and shape putty if we need to, to get, you know, get some kind of look back to it. It may not be exactly like that, which is pretty detailed. Uh, but I like the fact of the uh, Mustangs, just for the fact of that we have the wood wood panel on the decals. I really wanted to use that. Uh, it is very similar to the uh, Lincolns. Give me a minute, get my brain right. Uh, and I think we could get away with uh, using the wood grain in there on the dash. Uh, I think that would be a different story. If I do change that, then I could I could probably get away with using it on the dash too. Uh, like I said, if I add add those things there, we could get away with that. Uh, it's got holes, so there's got to be little gauges. Looks like right there, three of them. So I could I could get away with doing something like that. Uh, but most of these decals we want to use. So uh, it's just a dilemma. I'll get it figured out. I'm not rushing it. Uh, like I said, right now it's time to, that we've done mocking up and we've done some fabrication to go back and clean all that up. Uh, that way this is all ready to be primed. Uh, I got in a hurry. I cut this too soon. So I had to go back and add material in. Uh, and then I shaped it to match the Mustang. And then I added the little ribs like you see here on these and the little pieces here. Uh, We've got our center plate already in. So other than uh, going through, and there's there's some these these nuts uh, clasped here. I don't know how to pronounce the damn word. Disnuts, Disneyts, I don't know. These little locking pins. Uh, there wasn't one out here on the end, so I'm not worried about that. There's just three on each side. I will probably, since I don't have any of those photo etch, I will probably just pick those out as far as detail and then splash them with the uh, black wash. Uh, but all these rivets down through here, remember, we got all those rivets and everything else. We might try to make that detail stand out a, a wee little bit more than what it is. Uh, and that being said, uh, this is full of detail. Not that I need to add to it, but I'm going to pick it out. All the nuts and bolts are visible in here. So we'll get this all painted. Uh, we're going to Ford it up. Uh, it is Ford all the way around. It's a nine inch. Uh, we will probably paint this, uh, pumpkin head, uh, that red primer, oxide primer color. Uh, the rest of it will probably be black. Uh, then we'll Hit out all the little bolt detail uh, with chrome. The plate up here around the uh, the yoke and the uh, pinion seal, pinion housing, whatever you want to call it. I'll probably pick out all those little bolts uh, on that also. And then I'm not sure what color I'm going to make all the right. The wheelie bars will probably be chrome. I did lose the spreader bar. Uh, I'll make a new spreader bar to go in there. Uh, it's no harm, no foul. Uh, but yeah, I mean it, you know, <coughs> to get away with this, this little bit of work was shocking, which I'm sh sure it's going to come back and bite me in the butt somewhere, but it always does. But yeah, we got that in there right where we need it to be. Uh, I may even pad 
that out another layer on each side to scoot that back just a hair. The uh, coilovers, pretty detailed. I like them. Um, I'm gonna get them painted and I'll put them in separately. Uh, I would like to say these set the ride height, but they don't. Uh, they're real close right now. Uh, I may have to cut that little nib off the bottom there and add one a little longer. Just I think, I think I'm about a sixteenth short. Uh, but you know, you take a little, you gain a little. You so you got to you got to balance everything, especially when you're doing something like this. Now I could have back half this car and been done a lot quicker, but uh, I've never. Excuse me, guys. Rough night last night. Uh, I've never Frankensteined two kits together. If that makes any sense. I've done trans kits and uh, all that, but you know this thing's gonna be half half Lincoln, half Mustang, and uh, really more Lincoln than anything, I guess. But even though it's not a Lincoln engine that's in the car, it's a Ford. I don't. You know, I'm not even sure what engine. It's probably a Chevy engine, truth be known. Doesn't look like one. Definitely a Ford transmission. Uh, so, you know, I could have gone the route with the engine through the hood, like your standard Pro Street. No, the, the hood, we even took the time when we rescribed around each vent. To deepen those a little bit uh, we have real hood pins versus these things uh, that we're gonna be using and you know there's so much detail underneath that hood look so I'll use some reference photos and I'll detail this exactly the same as close as possible but I want the engine to stand underneath the hood I don't want to cut into that hood uh, it would have been super easy to do it you know guys no yeah, use, I use the same as Fred Henry's method. You know, I put that in there, Mary. I put some marks, and I, I cut it a little smaller. You always want to cut your opening a little smaller. Uh, it's easier to take away material than it is to add material. Uh, but, you know, this hood fits so nice. The, the body lines are beautiful. When they retooled this, they did a really good job on it. Uh, but I want that engine under the hood. And with this having that twin blower, off the intake down low it works perfect the only thing I didn't count on is mr. Ledford that's who I traded for this uh, kit he took the uh, the turbo coolers or whatever those would be ice ice box what fuel tank whatever it was that was here uh, he took that out and I'm missing one of my radiators so I mean somewhere I think in here these radiators go in here like this or something like that or I don't know how they go like this I'm not for sure let's take a look here real quick no so we're gonna make this just our single radiator and we're gonna put that in there we're gonna try to get it to go in there right there that way we can get our radiator hoses hooked up too uh, if not I'll have to go to the parts box and We'll have to figure out a radiator that'll work in here and fit and all that because as far as body goes we want everything that was body of the mustang to fit in here uh but yeah i've got quite a bit done mocked up a million times taken back apart and uh we're really close i probably another uh sorry guys probably another hour or two and I will have the basis for this to go into primer. Um, when I say basis, I don't mean like the exhaust, uh, the rear diff, the door cards, the body, all the body parts. Uh, the rear spoiler is done. It's right here. It's ready to be painted or primed and then painted. We are going to remember the OEM colors on the body. Original. This guy bought, you know, he's had this Mustang for years and decided to turn it into a pro street machine. And there's nothing wrong with the, the body or the paint. So 
Why, why fix it if it ain't broke? That's my story and I'm sticking to it. But I'm having a blast, Dylan. Uh, thank you again for hosting this. Uh, I got something in my eyes, guy. I've been doing some sand. I probably got a little plastic burr in my eye. Uh, so, if you guys, you're not already, guys. There's plenty of time. Get get into this. Send your pictures and everything to uh, Dylan over at NYS Modeling. Uh, he hosts this every year. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some uh, other ones. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you, it's hard to see if this is on there. You can see because this overhangs on the side now, but that's okay. That's kind of what I wanted. That that little lip there, that gives me about an eighth of an inch for it to sit down over top of this and even sit lower. That way I have plenty of clearance inside for the roof of the Mustang. Uh, the Mustang's getting black interior. Uh, It'll be different shades of black, so we'll be using uh, satin, gloss, flat, matte, all that just to give the different variations of black. I will highlight with whatever. Uh, it'll get five-point harnesses. Uh, and the other dilemma is it really doesn't matter once it's done which seats I'll use. They're both the same height. Uh, these are a little narrower, which I like. Uh, these are from the Lincoln. But these have the headrest, so I can clean that up in there, and my seatbelts can come over top of that, uh, underneath the headrest and over top of the backrest, and down the front where the Mustangs are all, you see, they're all one piece, so it doesn't really allow that that look anyways to help hold the seatbelts. Uh, even though I could just glue them in place, but, you know, the same fact. I like these a lot better. Uh, these are more race style. Uh, we may do uh, a cloth insert on them. We're just, we're kind of open right now. Uh, the other thing is, guys, uh, this belongs to the Lincoln. I want your opinion. Just let me down in the comments. Uh, use it, don't use it, whatever's simpler for you. But this is the rear spoiler that goes on the uh, Lincoln. I don't have it on here exactly right, but it does fit very well. And does kind of look the part. If you think that would look good on there, or that would be too much with having the, the gold wing spoiler in the back. Uh, so just let me know. And uh, thank you to all my past, present, future subs. If you're not sub, please hit the sub button with the bell notification while you're at it. You'll know when these videos come out. Uh, the Mental Monday. Didn't go over as well as I thought it would be. It's such a controversial subject, apparently, to everybody. Apparently, it's, it's not that controversial, I guess, because not a lot of people commented on it, uh, like I thought they would anyways. Uh, but you guys have to realize that that's just pertains to contest. It doesn't, doesn't pertain to, you know, you just building one or taking it to a show where a lot of that stuff really doesn't even matter. Uh, it's some of these bigger shows that are, people are complaining because, you know, they still to me, a scratch built model is going to be better than, you know, all those parts because there's more work put into it. Uh, and you can definitely tell the difference between scratch built and a 3d pr printed part. But if we're going to throw these things into specific categories, which is really the complete opposite of what needs to happen. Uh, yeah, they could add a category, but a lot of shows won't, don't want to add categories. It's more, it's more of everything. It's more trophies or plaques. It's then you then you're creating the Pandora's box. I was talking about opening more, more subcategories off that category because what what deems it necessary to go into a 3D only uh, file? If it's a, just a 3D printed kit, well, to me that's bullshit. If you buy a 3D printed kit, it's in a box. You open it up and you build it. It is box stock. Just because the material it's made out of. But that doesn't mean nothing. It's no different if you bought a full resin kit. That's that's my comparison because that is a legit comparison. If you open a three, a full resin kit and you build it, do a, build a box stock, whatever it comes with, and you build it right out of that box and you set it on the table in the box stock category... It's a box stock build. 3D printer should be no different. 
you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander type thing here. Uh, don't segregate 3D printed away from everything else because it doesn't mean nothing. Uh, and, and, and in the ways of the real world, I'm sorry, uh, but if you can't afford 3D printed parts or buy a 3D printer, I mean, I understand that. But in the same fact, that's just the way it is. Not everybody can buy all the equipment to do resin cast stuff or buy resin bodies or trans kits or any of that stuff. So it doesn't mean that it should be unfair to the, the masses. That's the same as you get a trophy, I get a trophy. Participation. No, if it's a show that's just just that, then that's, the, you know, of course. But uh, we're, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves on here, guys. Just leave it to hell alone. It's 3D printed parts. The judges, now yes, they should start paying a little more close attention and dinging guys for using 3D printed parts if they're not taking the time to clean them, prep them, you know, and, and do their due diligence on them. I, I understand that, and I, I wouldn't have a ground to stand on. But as far as making a, a category for just 3D printed, no. You need a category for resin then. It is both resin. One's manipulated by light. The other is a curing process. They both... They both have to be cured. They both have to be prepped and cleaned and and, and sanded and primed and, and painted. No different. There's it's just the material. And it because it's something new. It's just more highly detailed is all. Whatever you're working with, whether it be, you know, tires and wheels or, you know, a full kit. But guys, you know, a, a box stock kit is just that. If I buy this model. And I build this just the way what's in the box. Not painting, yeah. I, I don't even count bare metal foil being a thing, but you know, I know they do. I build it completely out of this box. I use everything that's in this box other than paint and glue. That's what's required for you to build the models, paint and glue. They give you everything to build it. And a lot of these kits are three in one, two in one. You can even customize it, but you're using what's in the kit. That's a box stock build. I, I feel like that guy sitting behind the desk. It's a box stock build. Prove me wrong. You know, it. it's Joel's EV charger. That is a box stock kit. There's no customizing parts in there. It's a kit that was created. You use everything that's in the kit. Now, yes, you could. But then you've got to be mindful that it's not box stock anymore. But you use everything in the box that it comes in. That's a box stock build. That's, I mean, like I said, it's just my opinions, guys. Just a little touch and base on it. Uh, let me know what you think about the Pro Street uh, Mustang. Uh, it's coming along fine. I'm not, like I said, I don't want to rush nothing. I got to go back now and do some cleaning up, sanding, uh, permanently attaching things, and, and then getting stuff into paint or primer, and then paint. Uh, and then we'll start the second wave of uh, sub-assemblies, which is the engine, uh, all the components to the engine, figure out what how we're going to go there, what detail we're going to add, if any, uh, and so on and so forth. And then uh, we'll be moving on, and I'll, I'll post another video when uh, I get some more stuff done for you guys to see. Again, thank you to everybody. Remember, leave your comments down below. Uh, my shop cards... Uh, she has not got a chance to make a new one, guys. She is printing off some of my original ones. Uh, so I, I will have those with me at Acme. Uh, and everybody that sent me their address, I'll get one out in the mail to you uh, as soon as they come in. I think it's going to be the 16th or 17th of this month that they'll be in. Uh, but if you're going to be at Acme, hit me up and I'll give you a shop card uh, while I'm there. Uh, and then I'll get the new ones out to everybody as I when I when they get done. And uh, that's about it, guys. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow with what's on my bench. Uh, I got a lot done on Jay's. Uh, I had to change a lot of stuff, come, go back to the basics. So we'll talk. We'll touch topic of that Friday on um, what's on my bench. So until then, guys, this is Rusty Rudder. I'm out.